You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Crap, we've already seen this many grizzlies. We've got grazing camp. I think I'll take you on. Like, you want to come after this? So I ripped the pistol out of my holster. Mom is trying to get her cubs up into a tree, regardless of its age. They got to be mobile. They right? got to they they be athletic. Gotta, yep. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Call, and today I'm joined by Brad Hunt. And we just got back from a month of bear hunting, mm-hmm. a little over a month. I think it was five weeks for me. Yep. Maybe I had I had about twenty days. I got I got a break in between, which was nice for the wife. Yeah, and kids. I think I had like twenty seven <laughs> days of hunting. It was the endless uh, endless bear hunt this year, but we captured some incredible things. And so today we were just talking in the office here. We thought let's talk about you know every time we go out every fall or every spring every hunt really. When we go out to really remote places, which is what we try to do, you went in with llamas 9, 10, 17 miles, sometimes further. We did the same thing. When you get that far in, I I rode on some snowmobiles deep into the heart of some spots in Alaska. When you get into these wild places, not talking about like in your backyard, but really wild, you experience some things in the outdoors that you just couldn't have predicted or never would have thought you would have seen. Yeah. And every year it happens to us every year, something wild and crazy or a few wild and crazy wildlife yep. experiences occur. And when we're lucky, we capture that on film and we did capture quite a bit this year and we will be dropping footage, not this Sunday, but I think starting next Sunday, all the way through mid August, mm-hmm. uh, we'll be dropping. We're, our goal is to try to drop, a hunt film every Sunday. So look forward to that. We, we, we went out there. We did the work. We are home now. Now we got to publish it. But, Brad, you're out there. What was probably the one, the one experience that kind of stands out for you as, I can't believe this happened so this season? In the springtime, you normally don't think about bears eating honey. And the bear that I happened to take this year... We happen to see him 50 feet up in a tree eating honey. So kind of setting the picture here, Mark and I had hiked. We've been beat. Like this is day eight, I think, of the hunt, uh-huh. seven or eight. And so we are we're going to new spots. We're running out of country to hunt, and we're not seeing hardly any black bears. We have seen a ton of grizzlies. Uh-huh. In the first 24 hours, we saw eight grizzlies, all within a one-mile stretch of this big canyon. That's creepy. And, so, and, and you guys have llamas, though? We have the llamas. How many? We have six llamas. Six I have llamas. three from Bo Beatty at Wilderness Ridge Trail uh-huh. Llamas. He, Mark has his three. And luckily we had them because they saved our bacon a couple times from, from grizzlies coming into camp. So we hike clear back into this nasty canyon We come as we're coming back out. Like we're beat. We ran out of territory. Like it's dry. We hit snow. Nothing. As we're coming back out, I just happen to look way down river, seven or 800 yards, and I see this something glowing in the top of this tree down by the river. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And like, if you see a bear out in the wild, bears pop. They have a uh, iridescent fur that, in yep. the sunshine, changes colors and is. They do. They glow if the sun reflects off of them. That's why when I'm glassing, I tend to go as the sun is coming up. I, I tend to, to 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 hone in on areas where the sun is just touching yeah. angles and hillsides because that's when something just reflects light right. where a bear hide reflects like they're bear shiny bedded or something and it's just like even if they're black they're shiny yeah but especially if they're red or or blonde, blonde. it's just like boo. when yeah. the sun hits right off the side of their body you know they just they glow they yep. glow so i like go all the sunny spots <laughs> then i start glass and shadows it's like opposite of glassing for mule deer and yeah. elk you know you're, you're not looking at the shadows that much and so we're we're coming down and I see that spot, so I put the binos up, and sure enough, I'm like, Mark, that's a bear. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that came to my mind was, this bear's been ran up the tree by a grizz, because we'd been on this trail where this grizz had just been stomp walking everywhere. Yeah. So I'm thinking, like, okay, he's got this black bear ran up the tree. But then the bear was occupied. Like, he wasn't just sitting in the tree looking down. And so we we decide that, you know, confirm, and he's a pretty good bear. We mm-hmm. don't see any cubs, so we run down the hill, and we set up, and we get close, and 
we realized that that bear is chowing down on honey. So he's he's climbed. How do you know it was honey? So once once we got the bear down, you could smell it on him, feel it, see it. But he was as he'd reached down in this. But did you know it was honey when you guys no, were no saw him messing? I didn't around. know what it was. I just thought he was up in the tree. Once we got closer and really saw that bear, uh-huh. I mean, he was like he was eating something. We knew he was eating something. Yeah. And so we're like, what the heck, you know? And we watched this bear for thirty minutes. You didn't know if it was like just an insect nest, no, or like no. grubs, worms, nope. Or a stash of some kind. Yeah, but or... once we got close, you could see all the stickiness just shine on his arm. And we're like, okay, he's into something. Yeah. And that sucker, he would like hold on to the tree and he'd get kind of just straight up and down. And he'd be looking at the sky and he'd kind of regain his posure. Yeah. He'd take deep breaths. I mean, he's breathing hard. He's working his butt off. This, <laughs> he's a big bear. Yeah. And that is this... a big, when I saw the, the video, I was like, dude, that is a big black bear. Yeah. Who hauled his fat butt up a tree? Right. And like, he did too. Like he's going to town. He's got a big hole. old pumpkin head, big old fr- front paws. Yep. Um, he's a typically you kind of have the people. We generally tend to 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 think, you know, black bears don't climb trees much. You'll see a mature black bear. You'll see mature black bears be like, Nah, I ain't climbing that tree. However. We have witnessed that bears that live in grizz, heavy, yes. heavy grizz country, dense grizzly bear country, we find that most of the bear, black bears, no matter their age, are felt enough and fit yeah. enough to get themselves to the tops of trees. Yep. Whereas grizzly, or black bears who, who, that live and reside where there's no grizzly population, they literally don't seem like they can get five feet up a big no. tree. And that's where we see like... We'll see the same big bears in different areas, grizz country, non-grizz country. But in the non-grizzly country, you'll see bears that are big pot belly, fat, and just, you know, just obese, really. Zero athleticism. Yeah, yeah. Like, compared to, (laughs) they don't have enough, uh, I think that a a bear, you just saw eight grizzly bears in in this day and a half or whatever, and any black bear living in and among those grizzly bears, yeah. it's got to be able to climb a tree. Yep. Regardless of its age. They got to be mobile. They right? got to they they be gotta, athletic. Yep. And so you, we don't generally find the behemoth black no. bears. They just don't exist uh, in general. They're uh, lean. They're lean is what they're, it is. They got big frames and big mm-hmm. bodies, and they have they have all that, I think, the propensity to be they just yeah. don't have the obesity and the laziness that they can't afford it, you know? Right. So it does, it doesn't surprise me. So I have seen in grizzly bear country, I've seen huge black bears yeah. uh, climb trees, yep. you know, and, and to contrast what you're talking about and, I, and I'll let you get back to your story in a minute. But one of the crazy things that I saw this season was we just, we saw so many cubs and, and sows mm. sub, like, we're talking 40 or so at Jeez. least. Um, it's hard to say because we keep seeing the same sow and cub groups. But in one day, we would see five sows with at least one or two cubs each hmm. in one day. Mm-hmm. And we we're seeing them everywhere. And that gave us also the opportunity to see big boars try to kill cubs. Yeah. Yep. And it was the first time we had really seen how serious these boars are about killing cubs i've seen one and this was in 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 a place that i was really familiar with you know went there for years and we watched one big boar kill a cub and it is not for the faint of heart yeah like it is brutal yeah it's intense Uh, you can tell that this boar this one boar which uh ryan and brady observed came screeching down the hill mom is trying to get her cubs up into a tree those cubs climbed all the way up there. Now they're picking trees that have a lot of branches. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another thing to, to realize is that a big black bear yep. can climb a tree so long as it doesn't have too many branches. Yeah. Yep. Um, but still there are like this bear, he climbed the tree about eight feet, Ryan said, and was like, uh, nah, it's not worth it. And he climbed back down. Hmm. Then he just bird dogged back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The the the, the area below where the bears, uh, where the cubs 
had been just a few minutes earlier right. trying to find a cub that isn't in a tree, that's hiding in a bush, that's somewhere. And if there was a cub down there, he'd have killed it. Yeah, right. After doing that for a while, he he weighed the cost and the benefits of climbing up that tree to get the cubs. And uh, like I said, he only went about eight feet up, decided it wasn't worth it, climbed back down. And he's like, waited a while. And then he said, just, just determined that this isn't worth a fight, yeah. isn't worth the weight. And he left. And the mom, the, the, the sow, she sat there for four hours through the pouring rain, just Jeez. up on a rocks above where the cut, bear, the boar was mm-hmm. as well, just next to the tree. And she got herself up out of reach as well, you know, but that giant boar, there's nothing she can do yeah. to protect herself or her cubs. No. Like she just is no match yep. for a boar that big and her cubs aren't, she, she can get herself killed as well. Yeah. He can easily overpower her. Right. He's just so, so vastly, he's a King Kong black bear. Yeah, if you haven't seen the intensity of like a boar killing a cub. Find videos on YouTube. There's some out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is intense. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, I've seen grizzlies kill black bears as well uh, on video, and that is brutal. They, they oof. just, they're like a excavator, like, <laughs> yeah, like a heavy piece of machinery. These grizzlies walk up, just dig these bears out of the ground. These black bears, they don't have a chance. Yeah. And then they get a hold of one of them and they just, just, just kill it so easily. So Mark and I actually, we, we were kind of thinking this. So where we had seen a lot of the grizz up in the, the big basins was a bunch of snow. Mm-hmm. And you could see all these spots. There was a couple dens for sure because there were tracks coming in and out of them. Yeah. But there were other spots that were like, kind of looked like a den they'd been dug in. So we're like, well, maybe maybe a black bear was denned in there. Mm-hmm. And then maybe those grizz are trying to go into there. Don't know. Just a possibility because there were yeah. a lot of grizz in that canyon. So, contrary to, to to popular belief, these mature black bears that live in grizz country, they can get up yeah. into a tree. Yep. If they're motivated, they can do it. They Absolutely. Can do it. So, this bear is up high. Yeah. and then, covered like, in sticky. It's He's sticky as can be. And like I said, once we got close, you could really see that, oh, he's got a bunch of something. At that mm-hmm. time, still didn't know it was honey. But he's got something that he's just going to town. So he's reaching in, and then he'd, he's basically hanging upside down. He has his back legs yeah. on a limb, and he's reaching in this hole. And he has chewed this hole, this tree, the whole bunch, trying to re- be able to reach further down into that hole. It makes you wonder, like, how much honey was in there? I don't know. Like, a lot of honey. It had to have been, because he'd been there for a long time. Like, the, the amount of scat and stuff that was at the base of that tree uh-huh. and around that area was... And I, I say this all the time to people. I don't think people realize how insane bears are about food. Yeah. Okay. When you, if you if you're an elk hunter and you've been hunting elk for a while, you know what it's like. Or even a whitetail hunter, and you've you've seen yeah. the rut. When you see a crazed whitetail rutting buck, muley, or elk, you see how insane when the rut kicks in. How stupid and insane and and mindless. Yeah mindlessly driven an elk can become for example you can shoot them with an arrow they'll and call them right back in they come back shoot them again you i've yep. i've my buddy anthony shot a bull three times it, it was taking hits did not care it would run away it would come back it would run away mm. it was ready to it would, down to its last breath as it's coughing blood it was still like destroying little pine trees and so it's, it, it, its death warrant had been signed sealed delivered he was going to die and yet doesn't even know it. He's so hopped up on on testosterone, testosterone and, and sexual drive and and f- just ready to fight that d- the thing just loses its mind. Right. And bears, I say this all the time, bears are like that with food. Mm-hmm. You know, I've hunted bears during the rut. They get a little bit uh their hormones kick in, they get they they're they're a little wild, they huff puff and they and it's pretty cool to hunt bears. I hunted black bears in in um, British Columbia, and and I hunted them during the thick of the rut. And right. I saw bears rut and fight and chase sows. They go a little mindless, you know. They go, they get, mm-hmm. they get reckless. Um, they just get ready to fight anything, humans, cars, whatever. But I've seen bears be even more scary when it comes to food. Right. I think that the 
the bear's food drive intimidates me far more than its sex drive. Actually, yeah. That's why, you know, I'm like, I don't want food in my teepee, in my in my shelters or around my camp or because bears will lose their mind over honey. Yeah. Lose their mind. Oh yeah. Because this bear is way up in the sky. If he falls, it's gonna hurt mm-hmm. kill him or hurt him. He does not care. He's wearing holes in his armpit yes. in his through his hide bleeding. Yep. He's he's yeah, he'd rubbed all the hair from like his armpit to almost his elbow. The hair was almost gone. And there was this huge like red spot. His teeth were bleeding. bloody. His teeth were bloody from from ripping at the tree. Whatever it takes to get a little lick of honey. Yeah. And here like the tips of his of his claws, I didn't notice it till I got home, but the tips of the left claws were like kind of chewed because he was trying to get the honey off of it. Yeah. Yeah. And That's what I mean. So bears Bears, when it comes to food, they can lose their ever living mind. Yep. They can, they it can, it can drive them to take risks and do things. You see it when a grizzly bear buries, even a medium sized grizzly bear buries a kill. Yeah, they they often they will fight a bear even twice their size to defend that kill, yep. and and often they'll actually defend it and be able to keep it even though the other grizzly is bigger and should be able to take it right but for some reason it's like the possessiveness of the bear who got the food first and has had a taste Mm -hmm. is willing to die in a way that the new bear hasn't quite got that committed to it and doesn't want it as bad sounds like my younger kids fighting my older (laughs) like (laughs) it's 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 insane so you you observe that uh, that food drive going yeah. overdrive oh, absolutely and absolutely. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So we're not going to tell you more about how that unfolds. You'll have nope. to watch the video. But this is a stud bear. Yeah, um, pretty cool experience. He's gorgeous. I love that the color too. Yeah, Just can't beat it. Well, I would say for me, um, watching the sows and the cubs. So ironically, the bear, one of the black bears that I took this year. It was just a giant, which is a, it, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not going to give too much away, but we're watching this bear, and it is camped, just camped under a tree Jeez. on a slope. And later we realize it has been there for a week. I don't know, for a long time. Mm. There's so much scat, so much sign, and the bear had just been camped there. What we didn't realize was the whole time I'm honed in on this bear and I'm trying to get a shot on this bear, which is for a couple hours. Um, and there's really hard, it's, it's really, you got the one shot angle. Mm-hmm. That's it. He's in these cliffs. Um, and above him, the whole, the whole time, we don't know it till, till later, there is a juvenile black bear treed. Now, this has happened to us every year. Going back, Lampers and I were talking about it. We were thinking about it. Almost every year, we find a juvenile bear up in a tree, mm-hmm. and we shoot a giant bear wait, trying to kill him. Right. Underneath, it just sleeps underneath that tree all day long. Yeah. It just makes me wonder how much cannibalism is taking place. How many of these juveniles are killed by the big dominant right. boars? Because this bear was camped. Just laying on his back, he's looking up, up at the top of the tree. The bear is. We're, we didn't know what it was doing. We just thought it was just uh, laying there. It'd be. It'd, I would be curious to see a study done in a certain area where you like. Mm-hmm. Area you guys are in where you're seeing a ton of sows and cubs. Yep. At the end of, or or say the beginning of the same time next year, over a 365 days, how many of those cubs are still alive? Dude, we 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 know we've taken some big boars out of this area over over the years in all of our areas, and we are witnessing. This is anecdotal, but it's powerfully anecdotal. Mm-hmm. We are witnessing a boom in in the bear population, yeah, and in young cubs and uh, sows. We we would in some of the areas we went to originally. We saw one sow and a cub the whole 10 to 14 days of hunting. Right. Now we see five, six sows a day w- with multiple cubs hmm. uh, every day of the hunt. Un- it's like, a, swi- it's like a, a light switch got flipped and a whole new world is, is 
there. Uh, so how much of that is because we plucked a few dominant boars out of a region and, right. in, 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 you know, a certain square mile of area and how much of it is just coincidence. Yeah. I got to say, I don't think it's coincidence. I think giant boars that are 15, 17, 18 years old, which mm-hmm. are the age of some of the boars that we've taken. Yep. I think that those boars are killing cubs. I don't think those cubs can make it to adulthood um, because they're living in the same general square miles. Yep. Over the course of six months, it's just a matter of time before they run into before each other. they bump into each other, and that boar gets to take advantage of the situation and yep. makes it like even when we were there, we're there one week, right? We saw a close encounter. All that, ha- all that needs to go right is that happens two or three more times in the course of six months. Yeah. And those cubs are dead. And if you have multiple boars capable in a region, well, I mean, it, it stands to reason why we never saw any cubs before. Yeah. But all of a sudden now we do. Yeah. Um, and we know that boars kill cubs like big time. We know that when you pull mature boars out of a population, the – the uh, survival rate of the cubs goes way up and mm-hmm. you have you have more bears yeah because to to go on the other spectrum of that in another area that we hunt a lot is i think in two or three years we've only seen maybe three or four sows with cubs but we've seen a lot of other big bear yeah you know yeah I, I, so i'm not all i know is you know, that juvenile, when I when I took my bear, that juvenile came out of that tree and was getting the hell out of mm-hmm. Dodge. And that thing was a snack. Yeah. Uh, and it was relieved. And I, I, I do think that it doesn't have a chance. If it had come down that tree and that other bear... Yeah. Um, these big bears, you don't, don't think that because they're so big, they're not fast. Right. Right? They're, pow- they're muscular and powerful and... And all they got to do is just get a hold, yeah. just a piece of that other bear. And that bear is absolutely un- unable to stop. Right. He's at the mercy of that, that muscular absolutely. giant. You know, just, I don't know what they do. I don't know how much cannibalism or, I don't know. All I, maybe they just beat the hell out of him and then they get him to run away. I don't see it though. I mean, it's competition. You know, it's it really is. I yeah, mean, I think they, it's death. I think they're death. gonna kill them. You know, they they're competing. We they have, want that sow, especially if the cubs are with the sow. I mean, obviously they're gonna kill the cubs. They yeah. want that sow to come back into heat so she can breathe again. But even a juvenile, I think if it's a juvenile boar, no, there's no way he can. They're gonna kill it. Yeah, absolutely. I think if it's a juvenile sow, it's the same thing. They're gonna kill it. Yeah, I I don't think. Um, they're the, the these mature boars are even thinking that far ahead. They just are so food protective, dominant, territorial mm-hmm. that they just if they can, they're gonna kill that other bear. Yeah. So uh but um so that was one of the things I, I saw that kind of blew my mind. You know, you had an experience uh with some grizzly run ins that um Yeah. It's it's like it's bound to happen in grizzly country, but I'm just grateful we got llamas because if we wouldn't have had the llamas with us, Mark and I would be two snacky burritos <laughs> being drugged off out of our teepee. So we did. We had two two juvenile cubs come in. So actually, we had we had a black bear come in. It's the only other black bear we saw on our hunt. Mm-hmm. We had a black bear come in. What do you mean camp. come in? Come into camp. Come into okay. our camp and less than 100 yards. So the black bear, the first morning, we're sleeping. I mean, the sun is just barely peaking. Mm-hmm. And the llamas go nuts. They make their barking sound. I don't know if you've ever heard llamas or not, but they, they bark. And it's like an alien sound. It's weird. Yeah. So we, Mark and I, just in our head like, crap, we've already seen this many grizzlies. We've got grazing camp. So I ripped the pistol out of my holster, hurry and slip my boots on. And Mark, he You're can't. in your teepee. We're in You're our teepee. And Mark, he takes his contacts out. He can't see two feet in front of him. <laughs> like, he's helpless. So... I'm running out of the te- the teepee. I unzip the door and as I come out, I kind of first thing I do is look at the llamas. I want to uh-huh. see where the llamas are looking, so I'm not wasting time. Yeah, I see the llamas and they're looking down right out of the te- the teepee, and I look and right behind our, this tree where we had our food hung up about 100 yards from us, that bear was in between and he was he was right there, like a medium size small like a a medium sized yeah. black bear. Okay, he's right there. I mean, 70 yards from our teepee. 
I don't know if he was just kind of scouring where our food was. He hadn't tried climbing the tree or anything, but he was he was right there. And so he's he's close. And he I realized like crap black bear, so I'm like camera, rifle, mark, higgage glasses on, there's a black bear. And he's not sticking around. Like yeah. I was hoping he could he would go down to the trees cuz I we had like 300 yards we could shoot. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can get a shot, get him on film or whatever. But he hightailed it out of there, and I've never seen a bear do this. And I tried to get it on film, but he was just in and out of the trees. I couldn't get him. He would run up and down the riverbank trying to find a place to cross. And finally, he's like, nope, I'm out of here. And he just dove into the river, and then he disappeared, but then he came up on the other side and was gone. Just but it was, but it was like it water even fast. Oh yeah, like it's basically like a dive, and he crossed over and was gone. But it happened within Crazy. less than a minute, you know. Crazy, yeah. And then the following morning, that's a cool thing to see. Same thing. We're in bed, so I'm thinking, okay, you know, the llamas go off. We're still again in our sleeping bags. The llamas bark again. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, like, crap. Okay, this black bear's back. Is it grizz? Is it black bear? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go out nice and easy. To see what it is, was I come out, I look at the llamas, and they're looking behind us. Well, as I look up, I see two grizz, and I tell Mark, like, crap, two grizz. So the the whole slow movement, slow anticipation thing is gone. Like, grizzlies in camp, and they're 40 yards. They're close. Dude, that is too, and too even, close, even, dude. And even his juvenile grizz, too close. they're 200-plus pounds. No, they, I don't care if they're – in fact, the, ju- the fact they're juvenile scares me more. Right. There's something about a juvenile that I think can be more dangerous. Absolutely, um, they're unpredictable. They don't. They don't have, you know, in a lot, some of these areas that we're in. I don't know how many of these grizzlies have seen much for, as far as people. Well, I think the thing that people need to realize when it comes to bears is they're unique, like people, mm-hmm. unique in yep. the sense that Attitudes some people are and- mean, just mean cranky buttholes looking for a fight all the time and some are more yep. agreeable and conservative and avoid confrontation and you never know when you bump into a bear yep. out there which what are you are you bumping into a mean gangster or are you bumping into an agreeable you know polite oh, exactly. uh, fellow you know dude who just just is out to um you know, for a stroll, like, you know, you don't know which one you bump into. Right. And if you bump into one that is exceptionally dangerous and looking to, to, for a fight, you're in trouble. Yep. Yeah. And that's, I didn't, I didn't want the confrontation. Like, obviously you don't want to shoot a grizzly. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. It's not legal in the lower 48 States. And mm-hmm. you know, it's just, that's a big deal. So that's something that I wanted to avoid. We try to always avoid that anyway. Yeah. So as I come out, I realized that those grizz are where I had staked one of the llamas. That llama's not there. So I'm like, crap. I'm looking around and realize that it's around the corner with Mark's llamas. And so I, I was like, I'm not dealing with this. So I, hey, get out of here, Barrett. Get out of here. Well, the f- so, so these llamas, were they snuck up on too? I think because, so. Because, because you only, it sounds like you heard them. They were already there. We heard one llama bark. And as I came out, there was no more barking, and those bear were already there. So I think those bear had slipped in. Because usually llamas, I mean, five, six hundred yards Yeah, out. usually they see them a long way off. Yeah, and they didn't. And where that llama was out of, pulled its stake out of the ground, mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, geez, they were close. Like, they came in, sneaking in. <laughs> they wanted to well, snack. The fact that that llama pulled, got itself unstaked and out of there. Right. Oh, and I know. I, I think that means... And I mean, I, they're standing where he was. They were absolutely. They were ready to take a because bite. I know from pound, I had to take a rock, and it's it's a rocky area. I had to take a rock and pound that stake in the ground. So like I know how sturdy that stake was in the ground. I mean, it was mm-hmm. not coming out. Even our tent stakes, we were pounding them in with rocks. You know, and they're they're wedging between these rocks. Yeah. And I come around there, and so I'm yelling at the bear, "Hey, bear, get out of here!" Well, that first one, they're like they're lined up, one behind the other. And the front one stands up, and he just, like, eyes, like, looking at me, you know? And I'm just like, oh, no, I'm not doing See, this. the fact they're not even that afraid is just right. bothersome, man. Once that's he stood like, up and kind of stared through me, that's when I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this any longer. So I shot the stump that was, you know, three feet from him, right next to him, hoping that that would deter them and they'd go away. And luckily it did. They, what what to caliber were you? So I'm using my, my Glock 29 10 mil. 10 mil. Yep. So... I have 190 grain buffalo bore. It's a, it's yep. a, so it's. I mean, it's gonna stop. That's what I, I was running the the Kimber. 
mm-hmm. Camp Guard 10. It's a 10 millimeter, 1911. Yep. And uh, same, I think I had two. Yeah, I gave you, uh, one, you 90s, gave me 190 and then, then I, I bought a bunch of 220s. Yep, and I thought I had some 220s, but 190s were going to have to work. Yeah. <laughs> so I shot the stump. They ended up, he dropped down, and they took off running. And then, I don't know, half hour later, we happened to see him down the trail. Just a quick glimpse of him, yeah. about a mile down, walking where all the other grizz were. Right. So it's like, man, there's so many grizz in that country. And we hadn't seen a black bear. We hadn't seen any black bear signs. But when you fired the gun, they could pretty much, they didn't hesitate? They, he, well, the first one, he hesitated for a second. I thought I was going to have to fire another one. Mm-hmm. So I yell out of my shoot, and as it hits the stump, he, he drops down, and he kind of looks, and then he looks at me. And then they finally turn around. I mean, it's all like, it's like it's in slow motion, yeah, you know, yeah. but they, they ended up getting out of there pretty quick for the most part, I think. Um, but man, I just, I never want to take a chance with a bear because you never know. So I'm not going to stand there and yell at him. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give him a warning shot. Yeah. No, I, I got nine others in the clip and <laughs> I talked to some guides in, um, Canada years ago and they said off the record, they're like, if a bear, if a grizzly bear gets within 50 yards of us, mm-hmm. we're seriously probably just going to shoot it. It's just that's uh, within that bubble. They've come too close. We're not yeah. even going to mess around. We're not even going to, uh, we're yep. going to, and they're, they're, they were, ex- they were so remote. It was insane, you know? Yeah. So they're like, we're shooting it. And then we're just leaving. Well, here's the scary thing too, is I didn't realize that Mark's on blood thinner. So I'm like, the whole time, like, if he gets attacked or cuts, like, I'm going to throw him on a freaking llama and try and get him out of there. There's no way, you know? But yeah. I was like, the whole time we were walking out, I was like, hey, Mark, you want me to go in front? And he's like, no, you think I'm scared? I'm like, no, but I'm afraid if you do get attacked, you, you're going to die if they scratch you. So. I don't know that blood thinners are – they're not going to help. But, I mean, if you get mauled by Grizz, it's probably – Yeah. You're probably in trouble anyway. Yep, exactly. Um, that's that's a wild experience. Uh yeah, uh, I, I I'd say my my next experience that I had was Pedro and I are are we're high, mm-hmm. we're up in the cliffs, and there's an area that I want to get to, but to get to it, you got to like pick your way through these these cliffs. There's no other way to really get right. there, and unless you go way down and way back up, probably there's not even that option. Not even that, no. There's really not other routes in, mm-hmm. um, and so you're 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 literally taking these like one foot, two foot wide trails mm-hmm. that are on cliff ledges, and you're you're kind of just being real cautious as you get by those. If you fall, you're probably in, you're probably dead. You know, I don't know how you survive it necessarily, especially if you have a fifty pound, eighty pound pack on. Mm-hmm. But once you get past that, you know, it, it opens up to normal trails again. But there's always like there's there's three or four spots that are maybe eight to ten feet long that you don't want to slip on your right. dead. So you're up in some cliffy country where um where once you know, once you get once you navigate those those that that little ledge system, when you come out the other side it just opens into this beautiful valley where we've we it's just an incredible bear hunting area, but nobody goes there. And I can't recall many signs of humans being there because how would you get there? You know, yeah, unless right. you were willing to do what we did. So we, we were up in there and just as a testament for how crazy it is where we were at, Pedro and I come around this corner and under like 18 yards, 15 yards, 15, 18 yards or so, there is a massive billy goat that just whoop stands up in the cliffs and Mm -hmm. we just see this giant billy i mean it was like right close and i'm like whoa and the billy just goes boop 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 and disappears off this cliff like they do and i was like i ran over there i got the camera out i filmed this billy um just go up these cliffs you know and these rocks and stuff and um it was pretty cool it was pretty cool because you know you're in tough country yeah you know you're you're in about as rugged as it gets. Yep. And what's ironic is uh, a couple of days later, in the same area, maybe the same day, um, we film this black bear 
in the cliffs. And we filmed a lot of bears this year in cliffs, mm-hmm. like where the goats are, where we're seeing mm-hmm. goats. We're seeing these black bears and they're, some of them are mature. But one of them is a really right. big boar. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's just because of food source? You know, where this season was so wet and rainy and strange and cold, it was, it was uh, nothing a, greened up. No. Yeah. Uh, the whole super cold late spring. It was a weird year. It was also droughty in some, like, really not very green compared to where it normally would be. We thought about it. We don't know, but we always find some in the rocks. But this year was just hmm. bears were in the cliffs high. Yeah. But, you know, last year we got on some bears high too, like right at the snow line, right as the glacier lilies are popping out mm-hmm. in the cliffs. I mean, we're we're finding more and more black bears in the cliffs in these Rocky Mountain areas we're in than right. than down low. Um, but but we'll find them down low too. I mean, I I shot my bear like at the bottom yeah. of the mountains, right. like water level. But um, we're sitting there watching this. Me and Pedro, we're watching this beautiful black bear that's got a color phase, and all of a sudden, like right across from the bear is a goat and they're both in the cliffs and they're just looking at each other at the same mm. elevation in the cliffs. And you're just like, there you have it folks. I mean, the bears and the grizzlies are, or the bears and the, and the, and the goats are up there at the same elevation as yeah. you, you just, people don't know that they don't think about that. Mm-mm. They don't realize how high. And, and part of it, I wonder, I think a lot of the bears actually den High. High in these rock I systems. Too. Like shed hunting and stuff, 90% of the dens that I've come across are all super high. Avalanche chutes, cliffs, yep. like where they can dig out under rocks. I think they find little caves and rocks to climb inside of. They mm-hmm. bury themselves in there. The snow comes. They're under like, you know, 10 feet of snow throughout the winter. The, the snow melts and they come popping out. I, and because of the, the, the spring season was so late this year, I think of a lot of them were just hanging out near their dens yeah. and uh, just sort of waiting for things to green up before they bothered leaving their cliff, their cliff uh, habitat. And I think that's largely what we were experiencing. Yeah, and I think they kind of den high too sometimes because in the fall, late fall, you get into like really rocky shell rock areas and rock slides and you'll find a bunch of moths and bugs and, mm-hmm. and I think they're up there eating those and then they that's where they end up denning as well. Yeah. You know? But Yeah. It's crazy. Um you know, we did see I did see a coyote kind of uh, go after a uh cub hmm. and um and a black bear mama like chase the coyote off and the cubs climbing trees and you see that coyote just like can I is it is it small enough for me to snatch it? You know, and you uh, just know if it was a wolf. Oh yeah. You just know a wolf is going to snatch a little cub. Yep. And uh, no hesitation. And once it picks it up and runs, yeah, that mom can't do squat. No. She can't keep up with that wolf. No. And he'll just run off and kill that thing. Even a coyote, though. Those coyotes. That coyote was big enough, and I think a lot of people don't realize how formidable a coyote truly is they totally underestimate how how dangerous a coyote is but for these small cubs and they look like footballs yeah. they're tiny little cubs yep. and a coyote can just run over there and snatch it and well, run off and like, that mom doesn't have a chance most people don't get to see actually how big like a coyote mouth is either i mean yeah. there's like a chainsaw inside that mouth yep and, they're all teeth yep. all head they're they're all head and mm-hmm. tiny bodies but and sneaky yep. that that coyote was like hmm he he wanted to snatch that cub but uh, that cub just wasn't quite small enough i think he he hesitated and then the mom uh mom intervened and those cubs went up the tree oh, yeah. um i also saw another cub that was like i think i'll take you on like you want to come after this let's like mm. a boar type of of cub that was like much bigger than its sibling and it was not afraid. It was it was ready to rock and roll with uh, the the coyote if uh, if it needed to, where the other cub was like running up trees, I'm like oh, I, ain't, I ain't messing with that thing. The other one was like, I think I could take you. Yeah. It is pretty cool to see. They're cool. I love watching bears. Like they're one of the most fascinating animals out there. Yeah, when you see lots of them. 
the bear that I took had as more as much fat on it as a fall bear. I mean, unreal fat. So I have like six or seven full quart jars downstairs. Same with Ryan's bear this year. Um, well, on our hunt, tons of fat. So much fat. I mean, I've been rendering fat for a few days. I've got so much bear fat now. Um, Mine. Zero, nada. Yeah, Pedro's had nothing. Like nothing. S- just skin and bones. I was hoping, like on the on the hips back here, I could get some pulled off and at least get like a a little yeah. pint or something. No, nothing. It, it makes me wonder, like, how fat was the bear? Yeah, that I killed. How fat was that thing in the in the? I mean, they'll get inches of fat on them. You know, yeah, the how fall. fat was that thing in the fall before it denned up? You know, like, whoa, dude, did it even den up? Did yeah, it just wonder, eat all like, swim? How much? How many pounds they actually will put on? Like, this thing was giant. I mean, so very, very cool season. So we're looking forward to bringing all that footage to you here soon. We're working on the films now, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. And we've got more coming down the pipeline. We have some elk and some muley stuff yep. that we're going to drop before the fall season. We got some archery mule deer tags. Yep, Brad and I drew some archery mule deer tags. Uh, I got uh, archery elk tag. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, we got some we got some stuff coming down the pipeline. That's going to be cool. So you want to check that out right now? If you use the code Gritty Fifty, um, it's Gritty Fifty, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, over at um, Go Hunt, you can get their new Explorer membership over there and it comes with the digital map system all 50 states yep and uh that map system you want to get it play with it do some things with it because it's really it's really got some cool features that none of the other map systems have uh also i like the satellite imagery it was just a pleasure to use it was so much better than what everybody else is putting out there i love the terrain analysis like scouting Mm -hmm. the terrain analysis is a game changer so you get the desktop version and the 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 uh, mobile version um when you go out and use the code gritty 50 between now and june 1st or maybe it's june 2nd somewhere in there use it as quick as possible as soon as you hear the podcast if you're interested because uh essentially you get it for free if you use the code because gohan has a situation where they're trying to get everybody to to test this thing out and use it when you when you do get the explorer membership using the code gritty 50 you'll get 50 dollars credit so it's 50 dollars to buy the membership yep. but you get a 50 dollar credit with your purchase so essentially to the, use, to the go hunt shop. to the go hunt shop so essentially you can just spend that 50 bucks on something you need for this season in the go hunt shop a new a new jacket whatever it is like backpacking gear their shop's pretty extensive but use the code gritty 50 and uh yep. yeah you'll open up all those doors so that's the uh situation there um Use the code gritty over at mountain ops if you want to support the show get some some ignite and stealthy hunter uh, Stealthy Hunter, I used uh, his glassing pad and rifle cover as always, and then uh, CBD oil and yep. their sleep aids and all that kind of stuff as well. So Stealthy Hunter is uh, is solid. And then Peaks, uh, Gators, Poles, and the Backcountry Duo Headlamp, all available right now. I think there's a new shipment they just got of the headlamp. If you've been wanting one, use the code GRITTY over there. And... Uh, yeah, stock I was up. Grateful to have the bright headlamp in Grizz Country. It totally. lasted a long time. Like, I our, keep I keep telling people you need to you need the headlamp. Yeah. Yep, we had a night hike out in Grizz Country, and yep, it's not fun. Yep, it's not fun. No, it isn't. But, but that's it for today. Uh, we'll we'll drop some more shows here coming up. We're in studio working on stuff, and we're gonna get some more guests on the show here soon. The Western Hunting Summit starts in a couple of weeks over in uh, Montana with lampers and crew and i'll be there and i will be recording lots of cool interviews with all of ryan's speakers and guests and uh look forward to a a summer full of great content coming your way yep thanks for tuning in and stay gritty